Oh, I think this is going to be everybody. Oh, is this on? My headphones aren't on. There we go. I think. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep everybody unmuted as long as the background noise isn't too bad and no feedback and. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, happy Easter after the long weekend. I'm going to share this with you today. We're going to start out talking about what you need to do to prepare for the AP test as far as uh, paperwork, is, electronic paperwork is concerned. I sent you this email. I think I sent this this morning, four hours ago. Yep. Uh, it says, fill this out today. It is a very, very short survey. It's just your name and are you going to take the AB or the BC test? You have a choice this year. There is no AB subscore if you take the BC test. I got this from uh, the Counseling Center. It says, uh, good afternoon. You used your school. Uh, this counselor sent this to a student that was having problems. So that's the, the, the lens you need to look at this through. Uh, you used your school email account for your college board account. So this student used her epsne.org email to set up the college board account. Can't do that. I mean, you can, but there's a problem with that. This email address does not accept email from out of the district. To take your AP exams online this year, college board will be emailing links to log in to take the exam. This means you must change your email address in your College Board account. Please log in and change your email to an email account you will be able to access on and prior to test day. Uh, if you used your school email, you can't do that because you're not going to get any emails from them. And therefore, you won't be able to take the test. So here's the steps to change that. <clears throat> you got to do that by April 16th. So in uh, what, Thursday. Got to have this done by Thursday. Then the counselor sent me this. I did a webinar today, so I've seen it in writing. Now about the option to change to AB. Students will need to join a new section I created in myapp.collegeboard.org. I didn't create this, the counselor did. Uh, the join code is MYNPEQ. For me to change their test, I need them to do this by the end of the day, Thursday, this Thursday, so I can make the necessary changes. I would still like a Google list of those doing it so I know I have everyone. That's what this is all about up there. <laughs> I believe 
let's just have everyone join this so that uh, the counselor can do what she needs to do. I think it's just if you need to change it, but let's forget I said that and just join that anyway. Any questions on those three things? Get that done by Thursday or you won't be able to take that. You possibly will not be able to take the AP test. All right. Oh, what? I'm going to get that. I'll slide that over there. I actually have three monitors, but I don't like to brag. Um, so I, I send it to the right. I put your videos on the sec on the right over here. That's why I look to the right every once in a while to see your beautiful faces. Um, yeah, let's do some notes. Let's take care of some calculus business now. Uh, the, here, here's the first problem. It is uh, speed, velocity, more in a uh, story problem format. The rate in calories per minute, which a person using an exercise machine burns calories is modeled by the function F in the figure above or off to the right here. From zero to four, from zero to four, it's this function right here because it curves. Looks a little logistic actually, but it's, an, it's the next to the third. Um, and then the rest is piecewise. So then these are all line segments. A, find F prime of 22 and indicate units of measurement, F prime of 22. Well, this is F is calories per minute. So that right there is about where 22 is. They want the derivative or the slope. So letter A is old fashioned slope, Y2 minus Y1. So F prime of 22 is three minus 15 over 24 minus 20. Negative 12 over four, so negative three, and we'll put on calories per minute, minute squared, uh, because it's the rate of the rate. It's really the acceleration, I guess you could call it. Uh, B for the time interval zero to 24, at what time T is F increasing at its greatest rate? Increasing at its greatest rate. That's second derivative. Show the reasoning that supports your answer. So letter B, we know that the rate at uh, from zero, let's say from zero to four, F prime of T is negative three fourths T squared plus three T. There's the rate. And then they wanna know when is that rate at its greatest, which is this, now we'll take the second derivative and set that equal to zero. That's kind of the tricky one on this problem. Uh, <laughs> My wife saw something funny. I don't know if you heard it in the background. Uh, negative three equals negative three halves T. So T, we're gonna multiply by negative two thirds. Negative two thirds. Uh, so two is equal to, so T equals two. That's where the slope right here, the slope is at its greatest, is right here at two. Now there's another place where the slope could be greater. It certainly doesn't look like it, but you can't assume that they've drawn all of this to scale. Well, there is no greatest or smallest rate on this one. There's just the rate, that's it. It doesn't increase, it doesn't decrease. It just stays the same. So from, oh, I, I wish I could, I hate this part about having to scroll. From 12 to 16 is a possibility. So we did from zero to four, from 12 to 16, F prime of T uh, is equal to, it's consistent. It's going to be, um, what does that say up there? 15. 15 Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. It's six over four. It's three halves, which is only one and a half. So now, um, we say greatest at t equals two. How do I know that? I know that three is greater than three halves, something to that effect. Letter C, hopefully this is very straightforward for you. If this graph represents the rate and they're asking find the total number of calories burned over the time interval six to 18, that this is how this is asking the question how many we're of course going to integrate integrate so integrate from six to eighteen, 
which is kind of in the middle of these line segments. Here's six. If we go from six to 12, that's a rectangle. 12 to 16, that's a trapezoid. And 16 to 18, that's another rectangle. Uh, so that's f of t. We're integrating f of t dt is equal to a 6 by 9, 6 times 9, plus 1 half times the height is 4, and then 9 plus 16. That's the trapezoid, and then plus 2 times 15. So we have 54 plus half of 4 is 2. 2 times 20, oh, I didn't want 16 there. It goes up to 15. That should be a 15. Uh, 2 times 24 plus 30, it always helps to know the answer in advance. 48 plus 30, that's uh, 102, 132 calories. I just did this about a half hour ago or so, probably a little more than that now. Questions on that one, on letter C. That was letter C, letter D. It's kind of the tricky one. The setting on the machine is now changed that the person burns F of T plus C. Now this, instead of all this being the function, this is the function right here, calories per minute. For this setting, find C so that the average of 15 calories per minute is burned during the time interval six to 18. Well, here's the clue on how to do this average value of a function is needs to be 15. And we're going from 6 to 18. So we have 1 over 18 minus 6, integral from 6 to 18. That's how you find the average value of a continuous function. <clears throat> but they tell us that this continuous function is f of t plus c. So f of t plus c dt. And they want to know what would c have to be so that the average is 15. So there it is set up. Uh, now we just need to do the math on it. Now we just need to finish it. Setting it up, I think, is most of the battle, of course. So 1 12th. Let's not reinvent the wheel. The integral from 6 to 18 of f of t ended up being 132. That's times 132 plus. The integral of C with respect to T is C T. Like the integral, the integral of five with respect to T is five T. Well, we just know what the constant is. Here we don't know what the constant is. Now that's from six to 18. And that should be equal to 15. Good so far? Mm -hmm. I love calculus, jeez. 132 plus, well, you plug in the top, 18C, plug in the bottom. Oh, it's minus, right? Jeez. Look at me for getting the basics. Not plus, minus. Minus 6C is equal to, if I multiply the 12 over, 15, 12, 30, 180. Well, that's going to be 12C is equal to 48. So C should be 4. Very unique question. I doubt you'll ever see this question again, but you, I, don't, I don't doubt that you, would, um, you could see this concept again about, of course, we've covered the concept of what is average value of a continuous function. Uh, we also talked about total number when when given the rate how do we find total number that's integral again what if they say increasing at its greatest that's how that's the fastest rate so that's why we had to take the second derivative and then letter a um just old-fashioned slope so as as we've seen all year it's not about me telling you how to do a problem and you spitting that same problem back out is can you take these concepts that we've talked about and apply them to a completely different situation? But you have to pick, you got to find, you have to figure out what is being asked. What concept am I supposed to do here? And of course, that's, that's the whole trick to AP.
here's the rubric. Here's the breakdown, the, the rubric and the point breakdown. I don't think I need to go over this with you, but I'll just show you. If you want to go back and watch this and see the breakdown, you're more than welcome to, of course. I post all these. Uh, with that being said, every time you go to my website, make sure you refresh, 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 so that you get the latest and greatest version of what I've posted. Now, you, you probably already know that there's only going to be free response on the AP test. So I thought, well, is it even worth covering the multiple choice? And it is. And here's why I think it's still worth covering the multiple choice. I think the first problem I'll have to get back to you on this is going to be like the first free response is going to be 25 points. Well, most of the time they're just nine points. So I imagine that your free res response question is going to have, I don't know. I mean, you, you could probably guess as well as I can. Normally there's A through D. What is there going to be now? A through G probably and, and have a bunch of concepts on one big free response question is what I, I can envision. I don't know that for sure. So to cover the most amount of topics we can with the time that we have left, I think it's going to be much quicker to do that also in multiple choice uh, form, even though you'll probably have to do a lot of it, you know, you'll have to do it in a free response question. <laughs> So hopefully that makes sense. So hopefully you're not sitting there going, why are we still covering multiple choice? It's because I still want to cover the topics because I don't know what, I don't know what's going to be covered. Since there's no AB subscore, do you know if the BC test will cover only second semester content? No, I, uh, the information I have is it will be covering uh, most of the year. What it may not cover is uh, sequence and series, uh, I don't know. I, I think sequence and series is our last unit. I'll have to look at that. And if I have more information on what exactly they're gonna, where they put the cutoff, I'll let you know. But right now we're gonna assume that they're covering the entire year. And of course in two free response questions, obviously they can't cover everything, but I'm saying that they're spanning the entire year. All right, let me finish this. Uh, let me finish the notes up. And then if you have any more questions, um, we can get back to that. So on limits, the first thing you should do is just plug in the value. Over zero squared minus zero. And hopefully you can kind of see where we're going with this. Oh, we don't want the limit if I plug the value in. That's silly. Uh, one minus one over zero. Zero over zero is an indeterminate form. So now we're going to do L'Hopital's. Limit as x approaches zero of e to the x. What is it going to be? Plus sine of x and minus two over two x minus two. And that is, uh, now it's e to the zero plus sine of zero minus two over negative two, because this will be zero right there equals one plus zero minus two over negative two negative one over negative two i'm getting one half as the limit for zero to 13 i'll leave i'll leave the work right there for zero to 13 an object travels along an elliptical path given by the parametric equations all right so now we can do a very quick problem to cover parametric. We'll actually do that in free response uh, later as well. So the equations are three cosine and four sine. At the point where t equals 13, the object leaves the path and travels along the line tangent to the path, path at that point. What is the slope of the line on which the object travels? So it's kind of like exiting the roundabouts, right? You exit and if you're leaving on the tangent line path, what would that be? So we need dy dx is equal because it says what is the slope? That tells me we're going to do derivative. So the derivative of y is 4 cosine. The derivative of x is negative 3 sine. And we're going to evaluate when t is equal to 13. We have 4 cosine of 13 over negative 3 sine of 13 and cosine over sine is cotangent but if you look at the answers we don't have cotangent in there at all here's more of a 
pre-calculus concept and that cotangent of 13 is equal to one over tangent of 13, they're reciprocals of each other. So this is the same as four over three tangent of 13 and we get letter D. Feel free, if I, if I switch the page, feel free to say go back, just like if we were sitting in class. And we kind of are sitting in class, just rather remotely. What are all values of P for which one to infinity of one over X to the two P of DX converges? So this is an improper integral question, but I also feel like it's a combination of sequence and series because it's really P test. And we just need two P to be greater than one. Because if we're going to integrate one over X to the 10th, let's say, that'd be X to the negative 10. And we add one, the X is still going to be in the denominator. And that's good for convergence when we're plugging in infinity. But if, uh, if that ended up being um, X to the one half, we'd have X to the negative one half. When we add one now, that's X to the one half times two. And now if you plug infinity into that, that's gonna go to infinity. So good, good things happen for convergence when this, uh, when this power, when this exponent is greater than one. When it's one or less than one, you're, that's gonna diverge. We're gonna go off to infinity. So P needs to be greater than one half. There's a great combination of improper integral and uh, the P test, P series test. I say P test because I think it's kind of funny. Uh, all right, so I must really like um, partial fractions, but uh, in the past, they've always had a question like this on here. This year is, of course, a completely different ball game, but we'll, we're just gonna keep going as if it's everything's, you know, nothing as if nothing's changed. So A over X plus two plus B over X plus one. We need to get common denominator. Now that you have common denominators, and we'll assume that, well, I could even write it. It doesn't take that much longer. Now all the denominators are exactly the same. I just don't need them anymore to solve this. Plus B times X plus two. Now we're gonna let X equals negative one. So negative two is equal to B. So we got the B. And we're gonna let X equal negative two. So negative four is equal to negative A. So A is four. Well, now the new integral is uh, four over X plus two minus two over X plus one DX. Well, now we have four natural log of the absolute value of X plus two minus two natural log absolute value of X plus one plus C. Well, now we can start looking to the answers to see how much we have to simplify. You know, you could bring those to the exponents. Then you could do a little division. Uh, wouldn't need the absolute value. It would actually be natural log of X plus two to the fourth over X plus one squared. Those are both even. Wouldn't need absolute value and then plus C. So that's of course, an option, but we see over here that it's letter D. They don't quite uh, simplify or combine as much. Uh, when we did the notes for this one, I had tricky negatives in big and bold at the top of the notes, if I remember right. And uh, it was something like this, integral of, let's say, 4 over 2 minus x dx, something like that. That'd be four, that'd be negative four, natural log absolute value of two minus X, because now the derivative of the inside is going to be a negative one. So if we went back to this function, if we took the derivative, we'd have to have this negative out in front. So be careful, we didn't need that. There were no minuses, there were you know, nothing strange there, just very straightforward. Be careful with your negatives. The table above gives values of F, F prime, G, and G prime at selected values of X. 
if h of x equals f of g of x, then h prime of one equals. This is a chain rule again. I think we had one on the last one. Uh, take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So h prime of one is f prime of g of one times g prime of one. Well, let's get g of one. g of one is negative one right there. So f prime of negative one times, and g prime of one is two. Now we just need f prime of, f prime of negative one. f prime negative one is five times two, 10, 10 right there. So here's what we need to do. Make sure you are getting essentially three things done. Fill in this for me, please, as quickly as you can, or as soon as you can, I should say. Make sure you have the right email. Make sure you can log into that AP place so that you can take the test. Uh, on the day of the test, you start uh, you know, emailing me I probably can't answer you. I think that would, you know, I can't help you much on that. I don't know what I could do anyway to help you get into AP. There's really nothing I could do. You don't want to have to be scrambling on that last day to get in and uh, get connected. Uh, this was the, make sure you join that class just to cover all your bases. There is a quiz tomorrow. So that we won't meet before then, obviously. That'll be on my classroom or on uh, Google Classroom. I think I'll open that up at 8 o'clock, 8 a.m., 8 a.m., and then you'll have till midnight to get that done. Uh, there's also, I want you to do the two free response questions that, uh, you know, for today. So the assignment today is two out of those three. If you feel motivated, if you want to prepare for the quiz a little bit more, you have the option of doing um, all nine free response questions, three for each topic, if you want to look, look at those. Uh, I think that would be a good way to review. So at the very least, just look at the answers, look at the rubric for them if you don't want to completely write out that third one. So this email, the quiz tomorrow, the free response questions for today, um, you know, this is over today and tomorrow. So, and then you have till Thursday to get this done, but do it right away. Do it right away so you don't forget. Also, um, the last thing I want to leave with you and I, I, no one's typed any questions on the chat. So the last thing I'm going to say is, listen, this is going to get old. This is going to get old for you. This is going to get old for me. Uh, we don't have that camaraderie. We don't have that closeness that we're all in the same building and walking out of the classroom. And, and I love hearing, oh, geez, what'd you get on five? Oh, yeah, number six was tough. You know, as you walk out of the classroom, I like hearing that because I know how much you guys care about this stuff. No, not maybe not specifically about calculus, but about your grades in general about doing well, about being competitive with each other. And you don't have that anymore. You don't have that cohesiveness. You don't have that, uh, the group for this single uh, mission of doing well in this class. You know, that, that, that component's just not there anymore. And so I need you to stay motivated as much as possible. I know you're seniors and you're looking at the clock going, geez, I only got, I only got a couple months, but end strong. End with something that you're going to be proud of. Make sure you can look back on this time and go, I didn't give up. I didn't stop. I kept doing the best I possibly could. That's what I'm doing for you guys. When I look back on 2020, I'm going to say for those two months, I did the best I could for my students. I worked my tail off. I sat in this basement freezing my hands off for hours on end, making up lesson plans and what I could do to make sure you could do your best. Are you going to be able to look back on this and say you did your best? In the face of adversity, you didn't give up. You didn't stop. Love all you guys. I wish I was in the classroom with you right now, but that's just not the way it is. And so I wanted you to, I want you to do well and I want you to stay motivated. And if you got to sit here and listen to me lecture for five minutes, if that's what's going to get you going, then that's what I'm going to do for you. So stay motivated. If you have any questions on what you need to do, if I threw too much at you, uh, just shoot me an email. I'll be checking my email all the time to make sure I'm answering all your questions in a timely fashion. Uh, I'm going to get answers to the last quiz up here pretty soon. So if you still have those answers, you can take a look and see what you did wrong. Get yourself ready for the final.
I think I'm going to cut the final in half. So it's, it's going to be like a typical test. In other words, it's going to be three free response and about 22 multiple choice so that I don't uh, try to overwhelm you or, or burden you too much. All right. My time's up. Any questions, you guys? Have a great day and uh, uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. You bet.